bringing you the latest stories in and around London. This is LBN News. Hi, yeah, good to meet you. Um, wow, it's always this busy. Oh yeah, every day. <laughs> Come on, let's get you introduced to everyone. <laughs> See the game last night. Can we get all cans, all cans, please? That's impressive, isn't it? Mark, give me a hand with the camera, please. Yeah. Give me a sec. It's only the new weather girl, for God's sake. Do you think she'd go for someone like me? So, you nervous then? Yeah, a little. <laughs> Don't worry. Just forget about the camera. Just do your thing. At least there are no floods or tornadoes. <laughs> <laughs> We've just had reports of a bomb threat in Piccadilly. Hello and welcome to LBN News. Our headlines tonight. Chaos across London after reports of a bomb threat. We can now go live to our correspondent at the scene. Hi Stanley, uh, we just arrived here on Cowley Street in central London. As you can see behind me, the police have closed off the area. When we arrived, witnesses said that a bomb disposal van had been seen in the area, but this is as yet unconfirmed. Can you tell us what's going on? What are the police saying? Uh, well, as yet, the police haven't made an official statement. Uh, all we can tell you, this happened quite recently. Uh, we did try to speak to a police... Um, I'm not quite sure what that was. There seems to be an explosion of some kind. There's uh, smoke above the building. John! John! Hello? Are you sure? Okay, okay. JP? JP! What? For fuck's sake! Answer me then! What's the government on the phone? We're going to code six. outside broadcast street for number 10. This is bad. Today, at precisely 5.27pm, a large explosion occurred in Piccadilly, London. The terrorist assailants are as of yet unknown, but their intentions are obvious. They intend to do us and our way of life harm. They intend to strike fear into our nation and stop us in our tracks. They have not and will not succeed. However, I regret to inform you that this attack was chemical in nature. The detonated bomb has released a toxic gas which upon inhalation will cause severe injury or death. It is with this information that we implore all citizens to stay indoors and take all precautions necessary in securing your homes best you can until this attack is confined. Close all windows and seal up any air vents. Do not attempt to leave your home. Do not open your doors. So far, there has only been the one detonation in central London, but there could be more. The authorities are investigating every possible lead. Thank you. I hope you're not going to use that door. Stanley, 
I won't stay here. I have a daughter to go to. No one expects us to stay here. We have family to go to. Don't you think I have a family? You heard what they said on the TV. We're not to go outside. We have a responsibility to report the news. Responsibility? You've got to be joking. This is a job, mate. Nothing more. I don't care what the statement said. That bomb went off five miles away. Mark is right. No one should feel like they have a sense of duty to risk their lives to continue with this broadcast. But surely going outside is a bigger risk. We can stay here. The studio and gallery are sealed. There's no chance of any gas getting through. I'm not fucking staying here. I'd rather take my chances outside. And what happens when you open the door? What happens if the gas cloud is already outside right now? You're not opening that door. The bomb went off five miles away, for Christ's sake. Listen, everyone. I've been looking at some of the meteorological diagrams upstairs, and I think by calculating the wind speed and the direction, I can roughly gauge where the gas cloud is. You can't open that door. According to my estimates, the gas cloud is just five minutes away from here. And according to oh, my estimates... Oh, fuck your estimates. I'm leaving. Fuck you. Stop it! Alyssa! Alyssa! No! I'm sorry. My daughter. Hello? Take the next call. Okay, okay. It's okay. He's here. He hasn't left. It's okay. Stan, we've got Vicky on line one. Put her on. But we're live on air. I... I can hear you now. Where are you? We're at home. It's closed to school. The kids are with me. They're... Vicky? Stan. The phone lines are down. We can only send a transmission out. There's no connection to the internet or telephone lines. <laughs> Communications are still down. Until they're up, we have no idea what's going on out there. It could be a while. We could be waiting days. Days? Hopefully not for communication, but the chances of us being confined to the studio are high. Right, okay, so first I think we should gather all the food we can find. Our lunches. Lunches from those that have left. Then we get back on air and try to give an update on the gas cloud. JP, are you listening? I'm not deaf. Yeah. Wish I had like a toothbrush or something. Yeah. I don't have a toothbrush, but I do have a makeup wipe. Last one. Thank you. Okay.
This is ridiculous. We're in the middle of central London and we're rationing food. It's what we have to do to survive, JP. Now, is everybody ready for another broadcast? Oh, for Christ's sake, Alex. Can't we just go for one hour without you going on about doing a broadcast? We have a responsibility to give people updates on the gas cloud. Well, I don't see why we should make an effort. When no one's even tried to get in contact with us. For the past three days straight, all we've done is give people updates on the weather. Well, I'm done. Direct your own broadcasts. JP. What's that? It looks like an empty bottle and a biscuit wrapper. Hidden in your jacket. Oh, so I ate a pack of biscuits and drank some water. What's the big deal? The big deal is that we are rationing our food. We do not know when we're going to get out of here. Got it! What gives you the right to question me? Calm down, JP. Come on. Ever since we shut that door, you've been constantly nagging at me, telling me what to do. It's bad enough I have to crap in a bucket let alone listen to you constantly whinge at me. Back off, JP. Oh, well, if it isn't the White Knight, Christopher. You know, ever since I first started this job, you've been telling me how I've been doing it wrong. What do you know? Maybe this isn't real. Maybe it's a hoax or something. Maybe it's just all fake. Listen, everyone, I think there's something wrong with JP. Last night I woke up and I just saw him sitting here, staring at the fire exit. Well, yesterday I saw him in the corner of the studio, muttering to himself. Well, we've got to do something. What's because... going on here? Looks like some kind of secret meeting or something. You're not talking about me, are you? No. No. Of course not, JP. OK, good. Who's ready for another broadcast? Good afternoon, everyone. It's now been four days since the chemical attack took place in central London. We are confined to this TV studio, waiting to hear further news. We must again urge everyone 
to stay indoors. JP, what are you doing? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen watching back home, it is my belief that this is all a complete hoax. A trick played on all of us. And I will now prove that there is in fact no lethal gas cloud by opening this door and venturing outside. Christopher, there's some pillows on the sofa there. We've got you, Alex. Don't worry. Um, guys, when JP left, I think that the door was open long enough for. The <coughs> <coughs> I think that the door was open long enough for the air in here to become toxic. <laughs> so. How long have we got? Well, if I'm going now, then you don't have long. What were your first few days at work this, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about doing one last broadcast? Alex, there is no point. It's over. I don't mean another weather report. I mean us all saying goodbye. Each one of us saying our goodbyes to our loved ones on camera. One last broadcast. James, <clears throat> you make me so happy. And I wish we had more time together. I love you. Hello, Vicky. I'm privileged to be your husband. I love you. Oh, Ellie. I'm sorry this is the only goodbye I can give you. I'm luckier than some who never got to see your goodbyes. You made me so happy. I'll miss you so much. Hi, Mom. Dad. So this isn't how I thought my first day would end. <laughs> the best parents ever. I love you. So here we are outside the television studio about to burst inside and let these guys know it was all just a joke here on Ultra Prank. You know how that goes. So let's go inside and let's break this potentially devastating news. Come on, let's go. So it's time to do the big reveal. They don't know what's going on. They are live on television. We can tell them right now. Yes, you guys are live across the nation on Ultra Prank, the extreme pranking show. How do you feel? Here is a wind up. Yes, you get to see your family with the help of our undercover agent, Alex. It was all just a laugh. You were you get great. To see your you were great, guys. You were great. You're Say live. hi to the nation. You're live on that camera. Say that hi. camera, you're live up here. It was a laugh. How do you feel? <laughs> Relieved? Yeah, so that is Ultra Prank. That's what we do. Make sure you join us next week. And remember, look how shocked they are. Remember, <laughs> if something's happening in your life and you're thinking, that can't be real, it might just be an Ultra Prank. We'll see you next time. Wave, wave, wave up here. Wave. Turn around, this way. Wave for the nation, they're watching you. See you later. Yes, Ultra Prank, Ultra Prank.
Next week on Ultra Frank, we convince this man he's murdered his wife. See how far he'll go to cover his tracks only on next week's Ultra Frank. Ultra Frank.